So uh, you may have just purchased a Duty Cat Arts Beanie Cap for the Monogram 172nd Scale Shuttle, or you might be contemplating buying one. So what I'm going to do here is kind of show you what the product is and how you can uh, work with it to uh, make your space shuttle look a little bit better. Now here's the piece itself. So what you'll be getting in the mail is pretty much what you see here. I've cleaned up a little bit of the flash around the edges and also you'll notice that there's a pour trough here. That's important. I'm going to leave that on because that gives the piece a little more strength during shipping. And also uh, you'll find that you can use that a little bit later when you're trying to blend your, uh, your beanie cap in. Alright, so I've got the beanie cap sitting here and I've got a kind of a cheap little moto tool here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and, and cut off most of this pour trough. Now make sure you use at the very least a paper mask when you're doing this to keep the particulates out of your lungs and um, you're better probably even to use a, um, a, a proper respirator with carbon filters. But I'm just going to use the little mask here. So, you can see that is quite a mess, um, but that gets you where you kind of need to be um, to go on to the next step. Okay, so I'm going to get a vacuum, I'm going to clean up all this mess, and, uh, and then we'll move on. Alright, so that was probably the worst part of the whole, the whole project. Uh, as you can see, I cleaned up a lot of the dust, and uh, so now we have... The beanie cap with just a bit of residue from the pour trough on here. And um, I want to keep that on there just to make sure that we uh, have a good fit and we have some enough material to work with. We'll try to put this actually on the orbiter. So the next thing I'm going to do is just to clean up around these edges a little bit and drill out these window panes. So this is a, this is a pretty nice uh, pin vise here. This will get me started with some pilot holes. Don't, doesn't take much because they're pretty thin. Too. Now these may be more difficult because they're thicker. So I'm going to do is just uh, with my X-Acto knife and some files just hollow all this out. So I've taken my X-Acto knife here and I've uh, basically just kind of knocked out the windows. I drilled a pilot hole first to, to start from. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take some jeweler's files and this is just simply um, a flat tail, excuse me, a flat and a rat tail and I'm going to just uh, 
basically work on these and get them all nice and smooth as well as clean up uh, the edges of the piece. Alright, so um, the original mitogram orbiter part is on the left, obviously, and uh, here's our replacement on the right. Now I've knocked out um, all the window panes, and I've kind of done some filing and trimming all the way around the part, and uh, we're ready to kind of take the next step here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut some fractal glass and apply it to the inside where these window openings are. Um, all the way including the top here. Now one of the problems we have is that this is a very very thick part and so um, before I actually cut the glass I'm going to sand down this a little bit to make it a bit thinner and even more so uh, on the top because if you look you can see that's a pretty pretty thick um, part and so if you look at a real shuttle you don't have nearly that step down. It's not quite as bad on the main windows but still I want to thin this out. So if you do this uh, with yours, just be careful, especially on the windows in the front. You don't want to overstress these uh, these frames. Now the other thing is, there is a bulkhead which goes um, between the flight deck and the cargo bay. Now because of the thickness of this resin, this is not going to fit uh, as per original monogram design. So this is going to have to be trimmed either along the bottom or the top and uh, I'm going to work with it here and uh, I think in all likelihood it will be on the bottom and I'll leave the top as a as a mating surface for the uh, for the beanie cap so just to keep that in mind you have to work on this stuff and trim it down so that it all so that it all fits together and get you the kind of results uh, that you need so I've been working on this for about an hour with um, sandpaper and sanding sticks and um, I've uh, got this sanded down quite a bit I would recommend uh, doing this with a Dremel because it's uh, pretty thick and um, it'll just be a lot quicker with a Dremel. When you get down close to the thickness you want, try to flatten it as much as possible because one of the one of the uh, potential stumbling blocks is uh, making all of these window panes flat enough to where the uh, windows actually the glass actually sits in here flush. You don't want any curvature in here at all and that's problematic because the whole structure of this thing is a curve but if you work at it uh, you can get it pretty close so once you have taken your beanie cap and cleaned it up and you've thinned out the resin where the windows go the payload specialist area and also around the cockpit area then it's time to actually cut the glass to go in where these windows are so you're going to need the actual beanie cap, you're going to need the template that's in your instructions. I've already removed one of the window shapes from this to use as a guide for cutting the glass. You're going to need a very hard surface. I picked this up at the IPMS Nationals last year. It's a very good little cutting block that we're going to use today. Of course you're going to need your, your slide glass. And this is actually nothing more than 22 by 22 millimeter microscope slide cover glass easy to get if you happen to need some more 
you're going to be provided with 12 slide covers and you only should need eight if you do this right the other four for you to practice on you're going to need a quality straight edge like this metal straight edge here very important you're going to need a decent scriber uh, this is one i picked up at lowe's has a little bit of weight to it um, testers um it makes one as well which will work um, so important to have this and you're going to need a couple of cups you're going to need one to put your actual uh, windows in as you create them and the other to discard your uh, glass pieces that you're not going to be using anymore because you don't want to lose track of those because you can you can cut yourself so let's get going um, this is a very 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 easy thing to do all you have to do is take one of your little template windows and put it right on top of the piece of clear glass right there all right so we'll see that no problem okay then take your ruler and your scriber carefully lay your straight edge here on the outside window framing the outside of the black on your template and just lightly run your scriber across this glass. Don't doesn't take much pressure at all. And it'll break. Should be able to see that. Nice clean break. Now let's do this again. Again, see how cleanly it breaks. Couple more times, get all the way around the window. Okay, so there you have it, um, your first window. Easy peasy, nothing to it. So you're going to do this four times because there are four windows that are this size. And then you're going to do the same thing with the smaller uh, inboard windows, the two center windows. And um, after you do that, you'll have six windows. And you want to test fit all these to make sure that the inside of your beanie cap is sanded properly so that they sit flush. That's an important step. And um, and then you you want to cut the also the the final two windows for the uh, service uh, the payload service uh, bay area, the ones on on top of the beanie cap. Okay, so we've got our piece um, cleaned up and uh, I've spray painted the inside uh, gray for the cockpit color to match the rest of the cockpit. And I've uh, hand brushed actually the edges of the window frames uh, black. And that way you don't have to worry about uh, precisely masking that uh, when the time comes to paint around the orbiter windows. So I'm going to use some epoxy and I'm going to glue the um, I'm going to glue the individual fractals of the windows in here and then uh, at that point the beanie cap itself including the windows will be done and it'll be just a matter of installing it on our orbiter 
Okay. All right, so I'm going to use 500 epoxy for this. And uh, you just have to be very, very careful to try not to get any epoxy on the exposed window glass. So I'm going to be extremely careful and patient with this. So I just got the glass sitting in like so. Like so. And I'm just going to put a dab of epoxy in each corner there. Just as a start. Again, this will take a while. Because this stuff uh, cures pretty quick. And we have eight windows to go. All right, so it doesn't look so good when you look at it like that with all the epoxy glue in there. Um, but that's the price you have to pay to get this, which is a space shuttle flight deck with optical quality glass. So very, very good. Real happy with that. So what I'll do now is I'll just wait until this dries and I'll go back and I'll hand brush some gray here to kind of blend that all in. But you're not going to be able to see anything really when you're uh, you know, looking in from the outside. So it should be good. So here's the final product. We've got the glass installed and we've got the cockpit installed. And at this point, the only thing left uh, for you to do before you try to put this in your orbiter is to modify this bulkhead here. This goes right behind the cockpit and separates the, uh, the front of the shuttle from the, the uh, cargo bay. And uh, this part has to be modified uh, on the bottom and the top, on the bottom to just change its height and on the top to change its shape to reflect whatever it is you have done here as you did your fitting and, uh, and grinding work. Now, um, once you get these married up, then you can put them both in the shuttle and you'll be good. Here's the original monogram part and the resin beanie cap side by side. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of difference between the two. Now as you're watching this, thinking about whether you want to buy one or not, I want to make sure that you're aware of a couple things. The first is this is a garage made product and if you purchase one, the casting that you get may contain some minor mold errors. This is normal and you need to be willing to deal with that. The second thing is it's really an advanced modeler's project. In addition to basic assembly and putty skills, bodywork skills, you should be comfortable with precise detailed work working with motor tools and working with resin. Um, if you're feeling adventurous and you think you can handle this, then I encourage you to get one. It can make a big difference in how your orbiter looks.